So next we see how do we use a one-way ANOVA in R, okay? So one of the things that R need is uh, I, for one-way ANOVA, the R, uh, R, what R needs is you need two columns, okay? One column must have the data. Uh, the, the other column must have the categories or the groups, okay? So for example, let's see this this one. So this is a built-in uh, data plant growth. You see that in the plant growth, the weight is the actual data, right? And in the group, there is the there are different groups there. There are control uh, group and then treatment one group and then treatment two group and so on, right? So so if you want to use ANOVA, I mean you can use ANOVA in the different format of data too, but it is better if you have ANOVA in this format. So write the weight or the data in one column and then the categories in the other column, okay? So I will show you if the data is given in like other type of table, how do I change that into this format in the next example. But for now, since the data is already in this format, so we don't have to worry about changing, uh, formatting the data, okay? So our goal here is, here is the weight, and then here is the uh, this is the group, meaning these are the weight 4.17, 5.58, 5.18 are the weight of the control group, up to 10, right? These are the weight of the control group. Next, 4.81, 4.17, 4.41 are the weight of the treatment one group and the remaining are the weight of the treatment two groups, okay? Now we want to know whether the average weight of the control group, treatment one group, and treatment group are, treatment two groups are equal or not. That's our goal here, all right? So first of all, uh, before we do the uh, uh, ANOVA uh, analysis, so let's do the box plot and then see whether their mean, a uh, sample mean are equal or not, okay? What I did here is I did box plot, weight versus the group, okay? Meaning, so it will calculate the uh, the box plot or evaluate the box plot of control group, treatment one group, and treatment two group, the weight of those groups, okay? So weight and then versus the group, okay? So the data is the plant growth, and then I am giving a blue, red, and green color for those boxes, and I'm writing the X level and the Y level, okay? Let's run this code. This is what I get. You see that? This is what I get. From here you see that treatment one group has fewer average weight than the treatment two and uh, treatment control group and treatment two group. And it looks like a treatment two group has a, a higher or higher median, okay? So it looks like that, but we want to, to make sure that whether this is significantly higher or significantly different from one another or not, what we do is we will have to do the analysis of variance, okay? So let's do this. So what I'm doing here is result dot one factor ANOVA. This is the name I gave. So you can give any name, no worries there, right? So this is result dot one factor ANOVA. This is AOV is the code that you need, okay? Function that you need that evaluates the analysis of variance, AOV, analysis of variance, is weight versus the group, data is the plant growth, okay? If I run this, uh, this is what you see. Somebody of that, you see that, did you see that the p-value here? So here the group, uh, so between group degrees of freedom is two because there are three groups, so three minus one is two, right? And then within group, uh, is 27 degrees of freedom is 27 because there were 30 data points, right? And you do uh, n minus k, so 30 minus 3 is 27. Okay, and you see that the, this is the mean square, right? So it is the group mean square. Do you remember that we denote that by S square B? This is the group mean square. So group mean square is 1.8832, right? That's the group mean square. That is S square B. And what is the mean square error? So we denote by mean square error. Mean square error was basically uh, uh, the this is the error or the residuals we call. Okay. 
So that is the mean square error is 0 0.3886. That is S square W. This is S square B, this is S square W, okay? If you divide this by that value, then you will get the F value. So let me try that. 1.8832 divided by 0 0.3886. 0 0.3886. If I do that, that's what I get. 4.846114. The P value here is 0 0.0159. What do you get for the P values? P value is less than alpha, right? So since the p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. This is what you get by using AOV function, okay? The next one is one-way test also does analysis of variance with one factor. This is also called one-way test. This is an alternative way to do that. Let me run that one. So here the variance of equal is true. That's what we are assuming. That's what this AOV assumes, okay, but we will check later whether the variance are equal or not using different different methods. So you see that if I run this and then print the result, I get the p-value is the exactly same as what I got here, right? And then F, the test statistic is 4.8461. Degrees of freedom of the numerator is 2. Degrees of freedom of the denominator is 27. Exactly the same thing, but it doesn't report the sum of the square and mini square. Okay, so mean is within group and between group mean is square. So, and then S square B is this over that, right? Okay, so now we want to test uh, the assumption. The first is homogeneity of the variance. So we want to know whether the variance of those uh, three groups, uh, a population of those three groups are equal or not. What you do is you do plot result dot one factor ANOVA. So what you do is you actually put here and then comma one that will check your homogeneity of the variance if i click here it will plot a graph like this okay so what does that mean that means if this red line is close to that dotted line okay if the bold line is close to the dotted line then we think uh, we we can say that the variances are homogeneous variance of the sample populations the populations of the samples are homogeneous, meaning equal. If it is far away like that, then they are not equal, okay? So this is just a graphical method. What we do is we plot the residuals versus the fitted values. So, but if you want to test using the statistical method for the homogeneity of variance, what we do is we use the alternative method that means uh, we use the p-value it will give you the p-value okay so for that to use the Lebanese test I think we discussed Lebanese test when we did the two sample test uh, for the variances okay uh, so you need the uh, library you need to call the library car and then uh, do the Lebanese test uh, weight versus the uh, is that the group yes weight versus the group and the data is the plant growth. So what did you get for the p-value? P-value is greater than alpha, right? So p-value greater than alpha means we do not reject the null hypothesis, meaning the variances are equal. There is an alternative method. There are some outliers, right? Here, you see that outliers? One is this outlier is uh, on the graph. If you look at the, the outliers are the, the values of the outliers, the numbers are given here. So four, 15, and 17 are actually the outliers. But we don't worry much about the outliers here because we got the uh, the homogeneity of the variance already that is satisfied. If it does not satisfy, then you can what you can do is you can remove the outliers, okay, and then uh, and then do the homogeneity of the variance test again, and then do the all the analysis again, okay. But here we got the uh, we got the uh, assumption verified that we needed to do the ANOVA, okay. So the next thing is the uh, the alternative method I'm using. Result 1.1F ANOVA, that's what name I gave. That's the Bartlett's test. So you will see this in uh, in the slide, in the next slide, okay? So this is actually what you can think is this is another way of uh, testing the homogeneity of the uh, variance, okay? So if I do the Bartlett's test, you may get the different p-value, but the result is actually the same because what we got here is p-value is greater than alpha, so the homogeneity of variance uh, is is true, right? 
So the another method is flinger test. It is mostly useful when the population is slightly non-normal. Okay. If I do this flinger test there, what do I get is, uh, let me clear the console again. If I do the flinger test, I get a p-value is 3.3088, which is also greater than alpha. So from all, you don't have to use all those methods. Just if you use one method and if you find the uh, p-value greater than alpha, you, you can you can stop, okay? You don't have to do all those three methods. I'm just showing you different approach that we discuss uh, in the slide. The next assumption we want to check is the normality, right? So how do I test the normality is plot residual uh, result dot one uh, factor ANOVA. So what I'm doing is I'm just plotting that. Uh, but instead of one, I will do two there, okay? So that's a uh, two, you see that? So if I do this, actually it plots the QQ plot, you remember the QQ plot we were doing in the normality test? So it looks like it is normal, almost normal, but there are some of the uh, outliers again. So if you find this is not normal, so you may want to remove the outlier. There are many techniques we can do, right? So sometimes we change the, uh, the transform the data into log or sine or square root, all those. There are methods to, um, to try if it is not normal, but first of all, let us check. So what you do is, if the data is normal and if the data has uh, some uh, outliers, the first thing you want to do is you can remove the outliers, okay? That's what you can do. But uh, let us, let us check whether the, uh, this, the data set is normal or not. I'm trying to use uh, the Sapiro test, okay? So let me write that. So basically we got the p-value bigger than alpha, meaning the data is normal, right? So you don't have to worry about the outliers there. So the p-value here is normal. So uh, meaning that we can use the ANOVA and we can apply the, uh, we can uh, conclude that the result we got from the ANOVA uh, is uh, satisfy all the assumptions, right? So meaning that uh, what was our result from the ANOVA? Our result was, summary, let me type that. Our result was, p-value was less than alpha, meaning the uh, we reject the null hypothesis, right? So reject the null hypothesis means uh, the mean weight are not equal. Sometimes, uh, we will talk about that in this slide too, but sometimes you will have the variance not equal. In that case, you use one-way dot test. Do you remember that we had the alternative method of one-way dot test there? Here we had assumed that variance are equal, but if the variance are not equal, but the data is normal, then you can do variance dot equal equals to false, and then uh, exactly use the same code, okay? So this is what you can do. So I'm going to take another example that the data is not given in the uh, two columns, okay? Uh, so let's let's consider this example. That is the example that we did in the slide. So there are four types of diet given in the peaks and then they record the uh, peaks weight after a certain time, right? And we want to see whether the, the, the certain diets are more effective than the other diets uh, or whether the, all the diets have uh, are equally effective on the uh, peak's weight, okay? So let me run these three uh, data, and then what I'm trying to do here is, I'm trying to change these data into write just two columns, okay? What I want to do is, I want to repeat, so how do I, how do I want to write here is, I want to write, diet, uh, so like 60.8, 67.67, 67, 65.68.6, 61.7, and then diet one, diet one, diet one, diet one, diet one, diet one, like that. Do you remember that on the treatment and the weight, it was like weight was 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, and then the second column had control, 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 control. So we want to create a data of that type as in the previous example, okay? So how do I do that is, Look at that, P diet, that is the peak diet, okay? Peak diet is, I wrote C and then repeat diet one. How many times do I repeat? The, the, number, of, the number of data points on the diet one, so length of diet one. Similarly, repeat diet two, how many times? Length of uh, diet two, and then so on. 
what I did here, let me run and then I will show you what do you get. So this is what you get. Night one, night one, night one, night one, night one. So how many five? One, two, three, four, five. There are five data points and then five day night one. And then night two, night two, and so on. The next thing what I want to do is I want to write the peak weight as I want to combine all those into one row, okay? So let's do the peak weight there. I ran the peak weight and these are the numbers. These are collecting all the data points, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to write these in the column form. What I did here is I did P data or the peak data equals to data dot frame peak weight comma peak diet. Let us do that. And then uh, I am what I'm doing is I am uh, I, I am displaying the P data. How does that look like? See, it changed into the format that I had for the plant growth. 60.8 is diet one. So up to here, they are all diet one, right? After that, diet two and then diet three and so on and diet four. OK, now I want to see the box plot before I do the ANOVA. I want to see the box plot and then see if the box plot shows you the equal mean or equal median, right? You see that? So we, we see that die two and die three are more effective on the uh, more effective on the uh, peak's weight, right? Let's see. And I want to do uh, the statistical method whether they are significantly bigger or not. So what I did is AOV and then peak weight versus peak diet. So what it does is it calculates, it checks whether their mean under the different diets, the average weight under the different diets are equal or not in the that thing again. So this is what I got. So what I got is I got the p-value less than alpha, meaning that the average um, weight under the uh, four diets are not equal. So some of the diets have uh, better performance on the weight gain than the other diet. That's what that's what it says. Okay. Similarly, other things are degrees of freedom of the numerator is three. Degrees of freedom of the denominator is three point. Uh, sorry, fifteen. So is one is within group and the other is between group. And then uh, f value is this divided by that, right? And then uh, p value is zero. This is the between group. This is the within group. Okay. Between, between group within group okay now uh, now uh, so uh, I, I got the summary now I want to test the assumptions okay so let's check for the homogeneity of the variance what I get here is let me show you the plot okay you see that the variance are equal because the solid line is exactly uh, exactly on the dotted line meaning that the variances are equal but if you want to do the statistical test like a Lebanese test or any other test let me do that Lebanese test again if I do the Lebanese test I got p value is 0.7205 you see that that means p value greater than alpha means you do not reject the null hypothesis the variances of the group are equal right so I tried one more uh, the Flinger test Flinger test gave me the p-value 0.5714. Either way, we do not reject the null hypothesis, right? Meaning the variance are equal uh, between the groups. Now, next is test the normality. Okay, when I test the normality, what I want to do is uh, plot res result 2. This is the result 2, right? The, you see that result 2 here? That's when you apply the ANOVA. So result two, uh, one factor ANOVA, okay? And I want to do the normality. So you see that the normality plot, the QQ plot is like this, but it looks like there are one, two, and three um, outliers, right? So let us check whether the, uh, the normality is uh, obtained or not. If it does not obtain the normality, then what we do is we'll try to remove those, uh, uh, those outliers and then do the test again. Let me do the Sapiro test. So I got the p-value is bigger than alpha, right? So meaning that we do not reject the null hypothesis. Again, so the data is, the data are normal, right? So uh, the population are normal, meaning that, so the ANOVA test can be applied, okay? So these are the uh, R examples on how to do one-way ANOVA.